Before we get stuck in to having a look at what each G code and M code does, we're going to have a quick overview look of a program. It doesn't matter what software you use to generate your G code. In this case, I'm using Slicer and I've generated the G code program for the famous part, Benchy. To see the G code printed out like this, it looks a bit daunting at first, but not to worry, it's quite simple when we break it down. Now it doesn't matter what software we use to generate our G-code. What does matter is that you select the correct printer from the settings so the machine can read the G-code correctly. Now G-code is pretty much the same and universal across all machines, but each machine has a favored way of reading it. So I've printed it out here for the RepRap type of printer. So let's have a general look at this program to see what's going on. The first line tells us it was generated by Slicer and our date and time. At the very start of that line is a semicolon. Now the semicolon means we're adding an operator's note. This is so a human can read it and understand what is going on. This note is purely for you so you can understand what each G code and M code means. See, the program explains itself as we read it. So you don't need to reference back to M code and G code sheets to understand what is going on most of the time. This will depend on the system you use to print out your program. Slicer is really good for this. It does explain everything in the program as we read through it. So the lines that start with a semicolon is not read by the machine. They're designed purely for a human to read it. Notes written within the program like this are known as operator's notes. They can also be included with inside brackets and it gives the same effect. So this section here is called the header. This is where the information goes that tells the operator how the program will run. So here we know what our parameters are for the extrusion, the infill parameters and the solid fill and top infill. Now operator's notes are great but sometimes the software we use to generate the G-code doesn't add one. But here we have M107. So I have to refer to my sheet of what M codes mean to understand what this line of code does. So M107 turns the fan off. It's probably not needed in this section of the program, but it just makes sure the fan is not running before we start our cycle. Now our next M code that the machine turns on is our M190. Now this sets the temperature of our bed. Within each line of code, we use an S value to define what the code does. So in this case, S65 sets our bed temperature to 65 degrees. Now S can mean a whole range of things depending on what M code we use, and they will all be covered in depth at different parts of this course. In a similar sort of way, we can also set our temperature of our nozzle by using the same kind of system. So M104 is the M code to set our nozzle temperature. And as you can see by our S value, we set it at 205 degrees Celsius. Now G28 tells the machine to go back to its home position, which is normally where it goes to when the program has finished. Now this can be followed with X0, Y0, Z0. I'll explain more about this later in the course where it would have its own section devoted to G28. This is useful to know when you wish to spline or split programs to run separately. So we can put a G28 at the end of our section of program when we want the program to stop there. So we can stop for the evening and run a different program the next day to continue from where we left off. Now G1 is our movement command. This is the G code you will see most common throughout the entire program. G1 tells the machine to move from point A to point B and the amount to move. So this line tells the machine to move Z five millimeters upwards. We know it's upwards because it's a plus value. If it was a minus value, it would move downwards towards the bed. So the operator's note here says lift the nozzle because that's what's going on. It's lifting the nozzle five millimeters in an upwards direction, and it's using a feed rate of five meters per minute. 
Now, how do I know that? Well, F is our feed rate value. This tells the machine how fast to move when using a G1 command. Now, 5,000 is in millimeters. So 5,000 millimeters is the same as five meters. Feed rate is often explained in millimeters per minute, not in meters per minute. That's why we have a value of 5,000. Now, M109 is quite a clever M code. This tells the machine to wait until the temperature of the bed has reached 205 degrees. The 205 degrees, again, is defined by our value S. So M109 S205 tells the machine to wait until our temperature of our bed is up to where we wish it to be. This is followed by a semicolon where an operator's note is, so we can understand at a glance what the M09 does. Now before we start adding any measurements to our program, we use G21 to tell the machine that we're using millimetres and not inches. If we were going to set the machine to read in inches, we would use the G code G20. For more information on this, look at the lesson on G20 and G21 metric or imperial systems. Now G90 is a more difficult one to understand, so it's best to look at a whole section on G90 and G91. A rough explanation is that G90 uses an absolute coordinate system which takes all measurements from one point on the component called a datum and G91 tells the machine to move a certain distance from where the cutter is at that point in time. But like I said, there is a whole lesson on that subject so we'll cross that bridge and discuss it in depth later in the course. And in much the same way, the machine reads G90 to understand to use the absolute coordinate system when moving in X, Y, and Z directions. We use M82 to tell the machine we're using the absolute system for when we're extruding. The G92 command is used to set the start position, which is the origin of one or more of the axes. In this case, we're setting our extruder head to zero. Here we have our first movement line using the G1 command. The Z dimension brings our nozzle half a millimetre off the bed of the table. This is assuming that our datum position is zero on the bed of the table. The F value is a feed rate of 7,800 millimetres per minute or 7.8 metres per minute. On this line, we retract our filament in our extruder by two millimetres. We're using a feed rate of 2,400 millimetres per minute while we do this. Here we can see our first X and Y positions. Now X is the axis that runs from left to right across your 3D printing bed. And the Y axis runs from front to back. I will go into a lot more depth on this on the lesson Cartesian coordinate system. Now this next block of code I've highlighted will span for the rest of the program, or at least the majority of the program. This can be hundreds of thousands of lines long. Now we don't really need to worry ourselves about this section because this is what we rely on Splicer to generate for us. This is how the actual model is printed on our printer and every movement that it makes to do so. I'll just scan over it quickly on the first line just to give you a rough idea of what each part means. The G1 is our G code for a straight line movement. X and Y are positional, so that's how we know where the machine will go to from the position the nozzle is already at. F is our feed rate, so that's how fast it will move. And E is the extraction rate of our filament. We can add semicolons to add a gap in the program to break things up and make it easier for a human to read. I have added these two semicolons here just to demonstrate that this program will be hundreds of thousands of lines long between the last block of G codes and the next section of program that I'm about to explain. These next few lines of program will be at the very end of the program. This is important to know when we come to splining programs, joining them or splitting them into two. M107 turns off our fan. M104 sets the temperature of our nozzle, so an S value of zero will turn off our nozzle so it'll start cooling down. G1 
G28X0 will send the machine home in the X axis only. This will put the machine back to its start position just along the X axis. And finally, M84 disables our stepper motors. This means we can now move the axis freely by hand if we wish to. Now we've come to the end of an overview of the different sections of program and the different things we might come across. But this is just a general overview. The rest of the course will give an in-depth look over how each part works, how each section works with each other, and how the coordinate system works, how the machine works out where it needs to go, and everything you need to know about reading and writing a G-code program for a 3D printer.